Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Christine from Sewing in the City, and today we are going to be making an entire t-shirt using only our overlocker. So we're gonna give our sewing machines a break this week, and we are gonna make the entire t-shirt using just our overlocker. So I'm gonna show you two different stitches we're gonna use to do this. Um, and we are going to cover um, putting in our neck band using just our serger, as well as hemming the sleeves and the bottom hem of our t-shirt and sewing in our sleeves in a round. So before I jump in, if you're new to using your serger and maybe you are a little bit apprehensive about serging and getting it threaded and everything, I have a free three-day thread your serger challenge um, that is on demand so you can jump into it right now and by the end you'll be a pro at threading your serger and I promise you'll feel more confident about diving in and getting used to all the stitches that your serger can do. And within the challenge you also get $10 off my full serging course, Simple Serging, which makes it just $27. Okay, so let's talk about the supplies we're going to need. So I'm gonna be using my own Rivington t-shirt pattern. This t-shirt pattern comes with a crew neck as well as a V-neck um, with the short sleeve. So this technique that we're gonna use with our overlocker works best with a crew neck. So um, you'll need a basic crew neck t-shirt. I'll drop the link to my Rivington pattern below in case you wanna check it out. We're also gonna need four cones of our all-purpose um, serger thread. So I have my four cones set up and that leads us to the very first stitch we're going to be using to make our t-shirt is the four thread safety stitch. So the four thread safety stitch takes both of our needles. So um, our left and our right hand side needle need to be set up as well as our upper and lower looper. But this stitch is so cool because we're using both of our needles, it's really secure and also, check this out, it stretches so you don't have to worry about popping your seams like you would with your sewing machine. It's a really flexible stitch and also very strong. So from the right hand side, we have a nice strong stitch there. So the four thread safety stitch um, is what you're gonna wanna have your machine set up to sew. If you need help getting your tension correct or getting this stitch set up, definitely check out my course, Simple Serging. I walk you through tension and troubleshooting this stitch as well as all the other stitches of your machine. So the first thing we wanna keep in mind before we start is you want to double check your seam allowances. So by what I mean by that is all different sergers have different widths of the four thread safety stitch. So you wanna sew a sample of yours and then measure it. So I know mine is exactly a quarter inch wide. Um, and so two eighths of an inch. The seam allowance uh, given for my Rivington t-shirt is five eighths. So I know that as I'm serging all of my main seams, I need to cut off three eighths of an inch. So just double check the width of your, your safety stitch against the seam guide of your serger. Make sure that it's all correct so you're not cutting off too much or too little as you sew your seams. Okay, so I have my front cut out. I'm using this really cool kind of tie-dyed fabric jersey knit. I have my back. I have both of my sleeves and my neck band. So what I like to do is kind of um, almost like an assembly line. I go through and I'm gonna sew, serge my, um, both of my shoulder seams, both of my side seams. I'm going to sew this seam on my sleeves and I'm gonna sew my neck band into a round all in one um, assembly line fashion. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so I have assembly line sewed all of my seams and I am a big fan of the press as you go. Even with knits, I feel that um, if I press all of my seams as I sew them, I get a much neater, more professional end result. So I've gone ahead and um, neatly pressed all my seams, uh, my shoulder seams towards the back. 
Now we are gonna focus on our neck band. So I've gone ahead and folded my neck band in half lengthwise and I've pressed it as well. So I have nice crisp seam there and then folded it in half lengthwise. So now I'm just gonna quarter out the neck band as well as my neck line and get my neck band attached to or pinned first to my neckline. Okay, so close up of my neck band here. I have placed my neck band seam at the very center back. You could also place this at your side seam or your shoulder seam if you wanted, but I am going to, I've just kind of honed in this little spot right at center back. So right here, um, it's a fairly smooth spot between my two pins. So I'm just gonna make sure my seams are lined up as good as they will get. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to clip in just a bit, clip some of the seam allowance away, and this is going to give us a slot where we can start our serging, start and stop. So I'm going to trim in three eighths of an inch. I'm eyeballing it. You can definitely measure this if you want to be a bit more exact. I just clip in my three eighths of an inch and then I'm going to clip this little section away. Now this is approximately about an inch or inch and a half that I'm clipping away. So that's all I've done, just trim out my seam allowance. And now I'm gonna make sure my needle is lifted on my serger, presser foot is lifted, and then I'm gonna slide this spot right under my needle. There you go. So we are just Gonna line that up right with the edge of our, so the edge of my fabric there is just where it would be if it was normally cut off by the blade of our serger. So that's where I'm gonna start and stop. So now I'm just going to position my neckline. I'm gonna sew this extra slow because obviously I want my neck band, I'm just gonna turn this to the right side out. I want my neck band to be nice and even, so I'm not gonna rush at all as I serge this on, just making sure that my raw edges are lined up and that I'm keeping this even so that my neck band will be nice and even. So let's go. Okay, so now as I come to the end of my seam, I have where I started here and I'm just gonna keep surging until about here. And then I'll show you how we're gonna tie off this surging seam. Just meet that, I'm gonna cut off my thread tail and everything and just keep on surging. And then I'm gonna stop with my needle down, put my presser foot up, turn this perpendicular Put my presser foot back down and just serge right off the edge. And we'll clip this thread tail here. So there, that gives me a nice ending. And what I'm gonna do is take this thread tail and I'm just going to thread it back under using a, um, a hand sewing needle. And that way, look at how nice and neat our start and stop of our neck band is. So, um, I mean, I could have gotten it a little bit neater, but it's pretty darn good. So, and then now let's look at our neck band um, from the front. I'm gonna turn this inside out. Oh yeah, a nice even neck band. So all I need to do is just give this a, a press, um, but we have a nice strong, stretchy so when I put this over my head I'm not gonna break any um, any of the stitches and voila that is our neck band with a nice clean seam so all I need to do is just thread this back under and voila very nice 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and pressed my neckband and gone ahead and um, pinned in my sleeves, right sides together. Both of my sleeves, I have them pinned in. And to do the sleeves, we're gonna use the exact same technique that we used on the neckband. So I like to make my 3 eighths of an inch cut right at the lower arm size, so right here, um, because this is the part of the seam that's generally the most, um, the most flat. It's like a little bit um, the most easy spot to kind of work in because around the, um, the notches and such, it gets where you just have to ease in the curve ever so slightly. So I'm gonna make my cut right down by the side seam here and cut in 3 eighths of an inch and then I will sew in my sleeves and start and stop in the same way that I did my neckband. Okay, so we are in the home stretch. I have my sleeves um, all set in and finished so nicely um, and all ironed. I did press the seam towards the sleeve and now all we have left to do on our t-shirt is hem the bottom and hem the sleeves. And this is the coolest part. So to do this, we are going to be using a really cool stitch called the flat lock stitch, and this happens all on our serger. So this is the finished flat lock. So this is going to be, um, for example, the hem on our sleeve and the hem on the bottom of our t-shirt. So this is done using uh, our left-hand side needle and our upper and lower loopers. So what you wanna do is drop your left-hand side needle tension all the way to zero, and then the loopers stay the same. So what happens when we loosen our needle tension is this is how we serge the seam. So this is the way it looks from the wrong hand side, but then once you open this up, see I've opened this, you just pull and the seam goes flat and that gives you this beautiful flat lock. So it's like a cover stitch, but you can do it with your regular overlocker. Um, it stretches, so it's nice and secure. And from the wrong side, it's all finished. Like all your raw edges are all finished. I am going to take my, I'm gonna do the hem first of my t-shirt here. So all I'm gonna do is fold this up um, I think I'll change my camera view so we can get a closer look. Okay, so I have the hem of my t-shirt here and I'm just folding up about an inch. Um, I am the, just really going to eyeball this. It's just about an inch. This is about the, um, the width of the hem that I would like. So folding up my inch to the wrong side and then I pinch. So I'm just gonna grab that raw edge there and I'm just going to fold right at the raw edge there. So that, um, I'm not even gonna pin this, I'm just gonna take this straight to my machine, and this is right on the fold and the raw edge where those two meet, that's where I'm gonna start surging. And with the flat lock, um, you can actually disengage your blade if you'd like, um, because we don't really want to cut this. There's no reason why we need to. Um, so we're just going to do our flat lock right along this. And as I make my way around the hem, I'm just going to keep folding it up. Okay, so I'm just going to place this right under my presser foot. My needle is up and I'm just going to place this down and this is, uh, we're not cutting off anything here. So we don't need to worry about starting and stopping. We're gonna start and stop in the same way that we've been doing with all of our circle, um, circle seams. So now I'm just gonna start starting. And then as I get to a new spot, I just literally eyeball this and keep folding it up. You could go through and pin this if you feel that that makes you feel a little more secure. Um, I just kind of eyeball this through.
Okay, and as I come to the end where I'm meeting my start area, I am just going to sew over a couple of stitches, stop with my needle down, and do the same perpendicular uh, off cast that we did before. And give myself a nice thread gel there. Okay, so here is what our flat look looks like from the wrong side. And now from the right side, this is the most fun part because now we just pull this apart. And we get that really cool effect that looks like an over, um, like a cover stitch, that one there. And um, I'm just gonna continue pulling this all the way along my hem. And voila, we have hemmed this so easy. The, from the wrong side, we just have a nice flat overlocked seam, no raw edges from the front. It looks so professional, doesn't it look so cool? So I am gonna um, do the exact same thing on both of my sleeves and then give this a final press. All right, so I've given my t-shirt a final press and I love it. I love the, the little details of this flat lock on my sleeve. I feel really good about like all my um, seams are nice and stretchy and strong. And um, I also love the way this flat lock, flat lock looks along the hem. So I am going to be styling this, I think, with my black um, mini skirt and tights and I think my big chunky boots. So that's what I have in mind for styling. If you want to make your own mini skirt, this is so easy to do. I have a video here that you can check out. If you liked this video, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Your support means so much to me and I'll see you next time. Bye!